Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to see how to automatically add ciphers to the Roll20 Cipher System character sheet. And even if you don't play the Cipher System, the concepts here can be applied to other systems. So the Cipher System powers games like Numenera, The Strange, and my personal favorite, the Magnus Archives. One of the hallmarks of the Cipher System are one-time use magical items and effects called ciphers, and ciphers grant boons to characters like giving them night vision, making them more resistant to damage, and even allowing them to survive fatal injuries. And what I think really makes ciphers fun is that they're not a rare resource. I've run D&D games where my players held on to a potion or a scroll for the entire campaign because they were afraid they'd never get another one like it. But in the cipher system, characters start out with two ciphers and they can replenish them once a day as they're used, or they can just choose to flush one and get a different one, and the GM can also just choose random times to give new ciphers to players. So there are always more ciphers to be had and players are encouraged to use them as they go about their adventures. Thing is, when you've got a group of players who are gaining and spending ciphers like that, it can become challenging to track. You don't want to always be adding or removing things on your sheet and slowing down gameplay. And since the Magnus Archives isn't currently on Roll20, there isn't a compendium that you can just drag and drop from. So what I did was set up a table of ciphers and then built a script card that rolls on that table and automatically adds the cipher that was rolled to the selected character sheet. Now, we are going to be using mods for this, so a pro account is required to do what I'm about to show you. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So the first thing we want to do is go into our game's settings page and go into mod API scripts. And you want to make sure that you've installed the script cards mod. Script cards comes to us from the amazing Kurt Jagers. Kurt, thank you for everything you do. This mod is incredibly versatile across so many different systems, and it's really become my go-to mod for pretty much everything I do. If you've never installed a mod before, just go to the mod library, and in the drop-down here, search for the word script cards. It'll show up, and then you can add it to your game. Once it's in your game, what you want to do is build out a table of ciphers. Now, I've just pulled up the Magnus Archives role-playing game PDF, and as you can see here, a cipher is made up of three parts. There's the cipher's name, the cipher's level, and then a description of what the cipher does. So what I've done is created a rollable table that includes that information. You can see right here we have the name of the cipher, and then I've got some double slashes, its level, and then some more double slashes, and then the actual description of the cipher. So swinging over my trusty notepad plus plus window here, this is what it looks like, name, level, description. And just to make this a little easier to read, this is kind of what that first entry looks like. So name, two slashes, level, two slashes, and then description. And that's gonna become important in a few minutes when we go to actually retrieve information from this table. So build out the table with as many different ciphers as you want. And then once that's done, we're ready to start building the script card. So let's scoot this out of the way for the moment. Let's close the table and let's see what the finished product is going to look like. So here I've got my character Frank's token highlighted. I'm going to go to the chat panel, paste in my code, run it. And you can see we rolled on the table. We got the deathly silent and still cipher. It's a level two and we see what it does. And you can see that it's also been added here on our character sheet. Okay, so let's see how we go about building that. All right, so I've got my trusty notepad plus plus window here. First thing we're gonna do is type in script with two open curly braces and then two closing curly braces. That tells Roll20 that everything between these sets of curly braces is part of the script card. Next thing we wanna do is get a reference to the selected character. So that's how we're gonna know what character sheet to add the cipher to. So that's gonna be a line like this, where we take the selected character's ID and we store it in a variable called char ID. Okay, so now let's go ahead, let's roll on the cipher table to figure out what cipher we're gonna give our player. And the way we do that is with a line like this, where we say bracket T hash mark, 
and then the name of the table that we're rolling from. So in my case, it's called cipher table. Worth mentioning, this is case sensitive. So make sure that the table name that you have here exactly matches the name of your table over here in the collections tab. And then once we've rolled on the table, we store the result in this variable here called cipher. And just a quick mention, variables that are dash dash ampersand are text, variables that are dash dash equals are role variables, which are usually numbers. Now under the hood, each entry in a table is made up of text, an image, and a URL. We're only interested in the text of the table entry. So we're gonna retrieve that using this line here where we're saying, okay, give me the cipher that we just rolled and give me its table entry text. So that's gonna be what gives us the actual text from the table entry. And we're gonna take that text and we're gonna store it in a text variable called, creatively enough, cipher text. Now, if you remember earlier, we had our entries in our table looking like this, where we have the name, double forward slashes, the level, double forward slashes, and then the actual description. So all that is currently in this cipher text variable. What we wanna do is be able to split this into pieces so that we can get at just the name, just the level, and just the description. And we can do that with a line that looks like this. So what this line is doing is taking our cipher text, so taking this whole string here, and we are splitting it at the double forward slashes. We're gonna break it into pieces. So piece number one is going to be the name, piece number two is going to be the level, and piece number three will be the description. So this single line gets broken into three parts, and those parts get stored in cipher data. Now, the neat thing about this is, even though this just says cipher data, what happens under the hood with script cards is script cards creates a cipher data variable for each piece of the string that got split up. So when we want to refer to the name, that's actually gonna be stored in a variable called cipher data one. And the level will be in cipher data two, and the description will be in cipher data three. And if there had been more double slashes here, then there would be more cipher data variables that get created. But script cards is going to create one cipher data variable for each piece that got split out of this original string. So now that we've got the data about the cipher, let's display that in the script card like you see over here in the chat. And that's gonna be done with a couple of lines that look like this. So dash dash hash mark title is this line right here, which is the name of the cipher. Then dash dash left sub, that's the subtext that you see right here where we've got our level being displayed. And then dash dash plus is the description being spit out that you see right here. Now, one final thing to mention about this is the level, as you notice in the original text, is a 1D6. It's actually a die roll. So when we pull out the 1D6 from cipher data, we're actually rolling that die and storing it in the level property. So we make the die roll and then display what was rolled out here in the card because when you give a cipher to one of your players, you determine what level it is at that point in time. And so script cards is just doing that for us. The final thing we want the script card to do is actually add this cipher to our character sheet. And that's gonna be done with a line that looks like this. And this one's a bit more involved, so let's take a minute and talk about what's actually happening. Okay, so exclamation point OR means we are adding a new repeating element to a character sheet. So under the hood, if we look at our sheet here, this ciphers section is a repeating area where you can have multiple entries just going on forever if you want. So we're adding a new entry to the sheet. The area that we are adding to is called the cipher list. Now, if you wanna figure out what a, an area of your character sheet is called, bring up the developer tools in your browser. I'm using Chrome, so developer tools is found by pressing F12 on the keyboard. And then what you can do is actually use the little picker tool right here 
to hover over an entry or an area on your sheet. So like I'm grabbing the, the cipher section right here. And what we're looking for is an item called repeating something or other. And so in this case, it's actually called repeating underscore cipher list. So repeating areas always start with the prefix repeating. And so cipher list is the entry that we care about. When we're referring to that in the script cards though, we don't need to put the word repeating because script cards knows when you're doing OR that that means repeating. So we're just putting in the cipher list. That's the area that we're adding to. We are adding to this specific character's cipher list. And then what we can do is start adding in the properties. So cipher dash name is the name, cipher dash level is the level, and cipher description is the description. How did I know what these things were called? Same way, if you point at an individual field, you can see right here, the name is Atra underscore cipher name. Script cards doesn't need you to put the word Atra there, so it's just cipher name. And then similar deal, you can use the picker tool to get the name of the level field. There we go, so it's cipher dash level. And then the description is gonna be cipher dash description. So nice and easy naming convention there. So basically what we're doing here is we're taking all the data that we pulled out of this string and we're gonna add it to the selected character sheet in the repeating cipher list, specifying the cipher name, level, and description. And now that we've got all this built, what we can do is copy this whole thing. Let's go to our collections tab and let's actually make a macro here and we'll call this add cipher, paste in our code, save it. And I'm gonna put this in my bar down here so it's always available to me. And so now when I wanna give one of my characters a cipher, all I have to do is click on their token and click add cipher. And there we go. We now see that the burning desire cipher was rolled here. We can see the level that it generated. We can see that everything's been added successfully. So there you have it. How to quickly add ciphers to your character sheet in roll 20. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.